with the release of Sword and Shield on the 15th of November, I've jumped onto my sketch pad, put together three new designs for you to represent your Team Starter, Team Skull Bunny, Rookie Gang, or Team Sobel. Hop over to the Teespring store now. You can grab a 10% discount with the discount code STARTER. Hi everyone and we are going into week 2 of the 2020 VGC Flinch Squad circuit. We are in the Ultra Series Part 2. We kicked off last week with week 1 and an incredible game between Stu and Hectic and we are keeping up the pace going into week 2 with a match between our players Costa and Johnny Hack. So as you can see on your screen, Costa running a team of Incineroar, Lunala, Groudon, Tapu Fini against Johnny who is running Incineroar. Cineral, Salamence and Dialga. So we'll get straight into this one here today and without any further ado. I'm really looking forward to this one. Costa is a player that has been doing very well recently. He won the second event of the Ultra Series that we did and then Johnny obviously played in the Invitational so getting an invite there and just doing really well. So this one's going to be a really hot, heated affair I would say between both players. We're seeing Johnny lead off with the Incineroar and Kyogre and Costa on the bottom of your screen leading off with that Incineroar and Lunala. I'm going to see the Intimidate cycling from both sides of the field from respected Incineroars here and we will see the Kyogre go for that primal reversion now and summon the, the rain to the field. Now if you would say that you are Kossa you can go for maybe a Tailwind here or a Trick Room depending on what you want to go for. Speed Control here pretty uh, something that you can go for. You've got fake out support, but maybe trading fake outs is, is quite a, a good thing. Just faking out that Kyogre and making sure that the rain isn't taking down your Incineroar. Or even better, switching in your Groudon like we are seeing here. Costa taking advantage of the weather war early on, bringing in his Groudon. I'm going to overwrite that Primordial Sea with his Desolate Land with his Primal Groudon, and uh, it gives his Lunala all the room it needs to be able to set up some speed control. But maybe Johnny sees this, maybe an Ice Beam into the Lunala and then a knockoff or a dog type attack to pick up the knockout onto Lunala before it can do anything too dangerous because it is such an offensive threat. Now we are seeing a water spout fired out. Unfortunately evaporated by the sun and a snarl coming out as well from the Incineroar. No fake outs this turn and uh, we'll, we'll break the Shadow Shield procking a Cobra Berry on the Lunala weakening those ghost type, uh, dark type attacks I should say and doing some nice chip damage to both sides of the field. Now Costa in an extremely good position. He's got the Tailwind up. The Groudon is pressuring some big damage onto both the Kyogre and the Incineroar. And Johnny's kind of forced at the minute to switch out that Incineroar because he needs that Intimidate back onto the field to really weaken that crowd on if he wants to later in this match we are seeing him switch out that incineral he will be bringing the salamence onto the field now which is a nice play it's immune to those ground type attacks that are coming out and it also gets that intimidate onto the ground on you think maybe the Kyogre might go for an attack here it wasn't too threatened but a nice beam could be an option but we're just seeing a protector just playing a little bit more carefully he doesn't want to lose too much damage early on but Costa taking advantage of this free turn going for that sword stance here boosting its attack by two stages so it will go to play plus one after that Intimidate drop from the Salamence. The Kyogre on Johnny's side of the field now switching out and Sinner are going to cycle back in and reduce that attack set on the Groudon. Put it back to neutral now and uh, nullifying that sword stance that it has just done that previous turn. So Incineroar are hitting the field. Salamence going to choose to Mega Evolve as well now. Still immune to these ground type attacks but has to be a little bit cautious about the type of Finny that can throw out moon blasts onto this slot and do some big damage now we're seeing a gravity even better costa throwing out all the options here gravity coming out taking away that flying type immunity that the salamence once had and under the tailwind ground i'm going to move first going to get a big precipice blades off making sure that it does hit and taking down the incinero and doing some decent damage to that salamence in the meantime so salamence here are going to be able to get a tailwind up and uh, that is exactly what it does do and Johnny not out of this game yet he is matching the tailwind and he can also bring in his Kyogre now which is going to overwrite the desolate land get its primordial sea back on the field and also start to pressure that ground on and he knows that Costa has to make a, a switch here with that ground on this next turn so can play into that if he wants to we are seeing the ground on switch out the incineral come back onto the field 
and he's got to be a little bit careful still with his Tappy Finney that does resist these water type attacks and uh, is the Salamon strong enough after an Intimidate to take down with maybe a double edge but we are actually seeing a return come out from the Salamons it is doing some nice big damage not worrying about the recoil from the double edge and an icy wind coming out from this Tapu Finney and it'll be interesting to see what this Kyogre goes for possibly a water spout here would make the most sense from Johnny just in getting damage onto the field really that's what you want but the thing is if you take down this Incineroar on Costa's side of the field which you're going to see now it does open the door once again for Costa to bring that Groudon back onto the field and disrupt Johnny's ability to uh, to utilize his weather meaning that the, the Kyogre is going to have to switch out again and whatever comes in if it's not immune to uh, ground type attacks or if it is weak to ground type attacks it's going to take some heavy damage in the process so Costa still sitting really in the driving seat here and Johnny needs to make some adjustments uh, going forward he needs to get his Kyogre out and back in again um, and, and at, the, at the same time really get rid of the type of Finney and limit Costa's options to switch around to get the weather back in his favor once again we are seeing the Dialga is Johnny's last Pokemon on his team it is going to switch in for that Kyogre it is the obvious switch here I'd like to see the Salamence protect maybe this turn rather than throw out damage just to protect itself from a precipice blades but maybe you have to go for an attack into the Finney to try and get some uh, a knockout there but we are going to see the Finney switch out the Lunala hit the field once again knowing that this Tailwind is about to end on his side of the field um, and trying maybe to get a position where he can set it up the next turn we are going to see a precipice blades and it does hit big big damage into that dialga here on johnny side of the field but procking possibly a wiki berry what we are going to see there and getting that health back making sure it can probably take another one but it has to be a bit cautious about this lunala that is on costa side of the field that has a shadow shield broke but it's still going to be difficult to take down and a double target here would be the the best option i feel but if you go for that then it does really open the door for it to go for a tail we're not opting for that though here just the moon guys beam and if you are able to take down the salamence now if you're costa then you limit johnny's option to switch around and the Kyogre can come in but you can easily switch that ground on back in Costa making a nice adjustment there bringing the Tapu Fini onto the field keeping that ground on in the back so once that Kyogre comes back onto the field you can just simply switch in your Groudon, overwrite the weather, have control, and then close things up with your Groudon and Lunala. Now, Kyogre is going to hit the field, but does Johnny feel comfortable going for these water-type attacks and knowing that the Groudon is in the back? And can he maybe go for an Ice Beam? And uh, does Costa suspect that? We are going to see the Finny switch out. The Groudon hit the field once again. Like I say, the Lunala is going to be difficult to take down now. Its Shadow Shield is broken. It is damaged, but you need to really double that slot and if it has got protect here that will be one thing that will be going against Johnny he is going to suspect this though he is going for the flash cannon here if we see an ice beam into the Lunala maybe he can take it down and get himself back into this match and it's exactly what we see Johnny playing really well here to pull himself back into this match the gravity returns to normal and the Tabu Finney is going to return to the field in this two versus two now Kyogre full health it's a shame that Johnny doesn't have Intimidate because that would really help out against this Groudon, but you've got to worry about a potential gravity being set up here for future turns. We are going to see the Groudon protect and just avoid any damage here as an Earth Power comes out into that Groudon's protect and the Kyogre going for an Ice Beam doubling up into that slot, unfortunately leaving room for a Nature's Madness now to come out from the Tapu Fini, but the Dialga does a avoided from Johnny's side of the field another earth power coming out into the ground on he is going to do big damage here is it in range for an ice beam though ice beam coming out from Johnny's Kyogre is it going to be enough to pick up the knockout? It's not enough. The Groudon hangs on with 4 HP. The Kyogre avoids the Precipice Blades. And now we see the Dialga taking a big Precipice Blades. It's not enough health to hang on. It goes down. And now Kyogre versus this Groudon and Tapu Fini. And we see the Heal Pulse. And this almost all but seals the deal for Costa here. This Heal Pulse coming in huge. Putting this Groudon's health back up to above 50% health. And putting it in a nice position to... Uh, throwing out these precipice blades if we see a gravity especially here will be um, enough to probably cut through this Kyogre especially with this heal pulse support that the Tapu Fini is offering and you can see from this match it's a great example of what a great support Pokemon this Tapu Fini is and has been throughout the uh, the 2019 season unfortunate that we won't or maybe fortunate whoever you uh, speak to that we won't probably have access to Tapu Fini in the 2020 season once we revert to Sword and Shield we do see the gravity set up another heal pulse come onto that Groudon and a full power 
unmissable precipice blades into the Kyogre. It is going to go for an ice beam in return and do some decent damage, but not quite enough. That Groudon just taking it as Costa tops up that HP bar on the Groudon side of his field and uh, he will throw out another precipice blade. Single target, going to be enough to take game one. And what a great game for us to kick off with this week. Um, incredible plays from both players, both going tossing and turning backwards and forwards, trying to get back into the match, but Costa just had the edge and that survival with the Groudon was pretty huge meaning that he was able to go forward with that one now we will hop straight into our second game as we see Johnny once again on the top of your screen and Costa on the bottom. Costa going to lead out in game two with Incineroar and Lunala and Johnny going with that Dialga and Incineroar now. So totally adapting his game plan going into game two. And he needs to. He needs to pull back a win in this one to take it to a game three to have a chance to take the set. But uh, Costa in the driving seat like he was in that first game. Just manipulating the field as and when he wants. He doesn't have the freedom to go for that tailwind. It's easy this turn with the, the threat of the Trick Room from the Dialga on the opposing side of the field, um, but he may have Trick Room himself. You never know on the Lunar Alert, may have Trick Room. Um, we haven't seen all of its moves yet. We are going to see the Dialga switch straight back out. I mean, Salamence hit the field once again, get another Intimidate onto that Incineroar and put it down to minus two as we see the Incineroar on Costa's side of the field. Go for a fake out into that Salamence and a Moongast Beam just fired out from this Lunala. Not going for any speed control here, just opting for offensiveness and uh, firing into that Salamence. Not Mega Evolve, but taking it pretty comfortably for um, <laughs> a Moongast Beam from a Lunala as we see the Incineroar. Go for a U-turn into the Lunala, break that Shadow Shield and uh, pivot out back into the Dialga now as it is sent out onto the field and uh, it will be able to maybe go for the Trick Room. You maybe want to see the Salamence switch out um, and go for a uh, the, the Kyogre maybe and get the Trick Room up and then start going from there. But I think if you're Johnny, you really want to try and bait the Groudon out onto the field before you bring your Kyogre out. You are going to see another Moongai's Beam here from the Lunala. And um, it will actually be going into the Salamence here and uh, does some big damage and picks up a knockout here before the Salamence can actually move. So uh, quite a slow Salamence here as an Earth Power comes out from the Dialga into this Incineroar, doing some nice damage, taking it down to just above 50% health with a roar coming out and <laughs> trying to get around. Potential Trick Room that could be set up from the Dialga, but it does bring in the Incineroar again for Johnny getting another Intimidate, putting this Incineroar down to minus three and uh, gives Johnny an option against this Lunala now. Um, you expect the Dialga has to come back in now. It's going to be a lot harder for Johnny, especially if the Groudon is in the back. Now he hasn't got that immunity to any Precipice Blades if uh, if that is what Costa goes down the route of. We are going to see a Fake Out from the Incineroar now and a Moongast Beam thrown out from this Lunala. The Fake Out, a deterrent against that roll potentially coming out from the Incineroar to stop this Trick Room being set up as we do see big moon guys beam but Dialga taking that pretty comfortably um, as it does set the trick room up now and uh, in a nice position to double into that Lunala with the Incineroar and the Dialga now we are going to see a Flare Blitz fired out from this Incineroar on cost of the field minus three not really doing the damage it needs to though unfortunately and uh, a U-turn coming out from Johnny expecting maybe the, the, the Groudon to come out onto the field, but not the case. Costa not going for that. Just sticking with these two Pokemon now and playing all the mind games as Johnny does get his Kyogre out onto the field. Now, I think if you're Johnny here, you may not want to go for an attack initially with your Kyogre. You want to be getting your Kyogre off the field, baiting that Groudon out to bring your Kyogre back in to start doing some damage later in this game. But all the while, you've got to keep an eye on your Dialga because it is at low health. It's not at the best of health right now. And um, maybe picking up the Incineroar here like we see with the Earth Power is not the best thing for Johnny because now it will grant... Costa the ability to bring his Groudon back onto the field pretty freely and start putting on a lot of pressure as we do see the Lunala reveal that trick room and reverse the dimensions now it's going to be difficult I think if you're Johnny you really want to be protecting your Dialga this next turn switching in your Incineroar hoping that you take a Precipice Blades from the, the, the Groudon and then the next turn um, going for the Fake Out and 
trick room set up once again and try and get your Kyogre in a position next to this Dialga in a trick room so you can start doing some big damage to everything on Costa's side of the field. We are going to see the Lunala switch out now. Tapu Fini hit the field once again. We saw how versatile and useful this Pokemon was for Costa in game one. We are going to see Johnny straight away go for that play, switch out the Kyogre, bring in the Incineroar, get that Intimidate onto the Kyogre on Costa's side of the field. And that is all important. It's just whether or not this Dialga has Protect. If it's got Protect, it can hang around for the next turn. And we've got to hope for no big crits or anything like that coming out from Precipice Blades. Now, we do see Precipice Blades come out from the Groudon. Fortunately, it is enough to get the Dialga on even minus one. So taking away that Trick Room option and the um, Incineroar is just going down to its 50% berry. We are going to see that proc and uh, get its health back. But um, looking pretty difficult for Johnny now. It's going to be a simple switch out from... Uh, Groudon to something in the back for Costa and then he just needs to switch that Groudon back in again and he's going to be able to seal this game up and deny the Kyogre much ability to do any damage. Now we are going to see the Groudon switch out, the Lunala come in. You've got to hope you see a fake out into the Tapu Finina water spout here. That is the play I think but um, getting damage onto the field while you can. That's, that's what you've got to do right now with your Kyogre but and then hope that the Groudon comes back in and it misses a bunch of Presser's Blades because now, if especially if the, the Finny goes for a Gravity, the Groudon goes for a Protect, um, then you, your chances aren't looking that great going forward because two Ice Beams may get the Groudon but it's more likely going to be a three hit KO and then you're going to lose inevitably your Incineroar these next turns. So. Once you do that, the Precipice Blade becomes a single target attack, and uh, yeah, it's not looking too good there. We do see the Gravity, the Incineroar going down, no protect from the Kyogre. It's just going to try and throw out some damage, but it looks like Costa is going to be able to seal this one up for week two, taking a big win here and uh, getting a 2 0 start in the field, which is extremely good. We're just seeing the, the Tapu Fini now not doing anything else, just wants to keep this Groudon's HP as full as possible going forward. And one more Precipice Blades now coming out and will be enough to take down this Kyogre single target and that is going to wrap it up for Costa so a great set from both players massive props for both players and uh, massive props to Costa for taking the victory in week two so that wraps it up for this week my friends I hope you've enjoyed it as always do leave a like on the video do subscribe to the channel for more content and we'll see you next week for week three of the Flinch Squad 2020 Flinch Squad circuits until then take care and bye bye